I made a video for the rain gutters and I just got done installing the rain gutters a couple weeks ago. It's late October 2024. And so let's watch here. I'm dubbing over this because you can see how windy it is and that would have ruined the sound. So I feel like it's going to be more interesting if you watch the video and I'm able to talk you through it. So what I want to show you is this is my personal residence. And if you've been following the channel, then you'll see that I've been working on the residence ever since 2018. And if you look at my homemade wooden scaffolding video, then you'll see that perfect time for me to put up the if you want to go back and watch this video you'll see you see how my scaffolding was right there and i could have just done it all from the uh, i could have done all the rain gutters from the scaffolding because it was already right there I was already right up at this level. That would have been easy. That would have been cake. Okay. So next time I do, next time I build my house, I'm going to make sure I have the rain gutters ready to go and do that before I tear the scaffolding down. Okay. But that's okay. Let's go back here and let's keep watching. And so what I'm telling you is, you see, I've done the concrete around the house. I've sloped the concrete away from the house. And before I even started, I made sure that I knew where these inlet drains were going to be. Because I'm not the type that wants to just shoot the water down onto the concrete and then have it freeze on the concrete. So you'll notice the one, the one regret I have about my rain gutter project is you see these little white clips. They didn't come in black and I didn't have the foresight to just spray paint them all at once. And then by the time they were up there, I was like, well, I don't want to go back and mask everything off and spray paint it. So maybe I'll get up on a ladder with a Sharpie and, and darken those in. But at some point I do want to repaint the house. And so when I do repaint, then I'm going to repaint all the, I'll just re, I'll just paint the rain gutters and I'll paint those little clips. And another kind of regret I have right here is I put <clears throat> too much slope in the rain gutter and it makes it look, like my house is crooked, but I don't know. I, I just wanted the water to drain, right? So this side, I was kind of in the mindset for concrete, which one eighth inch per foot is a decent slope. So that's what I did on my rain gutter, but it's way too steep. Not way too steep. I mean, I'm not going to go up there and change it because it's like one of those things where it's not worth it. Plus I riveted all my rain gutters in and I'll tell you why later, but they say for a rain gutter, you should have a half inch of slope per 10 foot between a quarter inch to a half inch. So next time I'll keep that in mind. All right, but let's keep watching. So this was the side where it's a little bit sloped, but once you get it in the shadows, you can't even tell. And the slope does go that way and that way. It goes both ways. And then on the front of the house, you can see that's kind of a drastic slope too. But then on one hand, I'm not regretting it too much because once I get all the leaves and dirt and shingle gravel, it helps the, the water flow through there better. So I don't know. I, I think it's fine. I'm not going to go off and change it. Now, I told you that I had riveted these rain gutters into the hangers because when they did my, my rain gutters, and these are six inch steel rain gutters, when I had them ordered, I went to the so the place, it's a U.S. building supply, and they did a great job for me, but when they run running through the machine, their machine kind of chewed it up on the inside there, so my hangers didn't really click in right like they're supposed to. So how I overcame that was I put the rivets, I drilled the rivets into these hangers. If you've ever installed the rain gutters before, then, then you know how those hangers go, okay? And... Let's keep going here. Another little regret I have here is it doesn't have to do with the rain gutters. It has to do with the gutter apron or drip edge or whatever you call it. 
when I did the house, I just got the little cheapy Home Depot. You know, it's like maybe an inch or two inches wide. But next time I do my next house, I'm going to get the widest, most expensive gutter apron I can so that it hangs down and almost covers the fascia. That way I can put as much slope as I want in, okay? So I did go back and I did put a piece of flashing under the drip edge or gutter apron and over the edge of the gutter because I don't want my gutters leaking on the back and I don't want to get up there and caulk them. So these are water, these are all watertight. I've already checked, it's already rained, but that's one thing. If you're gonna do gutters, then hopefully when you've done your roof, you've got some really nice uh, wide gutter apron and it's going to make it a lot easier. Plus another thing I did is I kept it, I kept the, I kept the gutter apron too tight to the fascia and then it was a, a battle to get that in, but I got everything lapped under there correctly. Okay. So these miters right here, of course I have a hip roof, had to miter it in. Now this right here, if you've been watching my other videos, let's go back and show you the, uh, the other video where I've done my yard drains. Okay, so that was last some of this year, some last year. So if you see this this video here, this video here, I put in all these yard drains, okay? And I knew where I was going to put my downspouts. And one summer I did the north side. The other summer I did the south side. So I put a lot of thought into where the the downspout things were going to go. Now this one ended up a little bit crooked. When I was back filling it, I didn't pay enough attention and I didn't keep it tight enough to the house. But just if that happens to you, don't worry about it because you can kind of bend your, see what I did here? You just make an angle cut on your downspouts and then it'll flex for you like that. So that looks fine because I couldn't get any kind of bracket onto the house just because it's on this angle and I thought that would look even worse. So just by bending the downspout like that with that cut, I overcame that problem. So if that happens to you, don't fret. Okay. And so my corners here, you see that? That's a that's a great that's a great mitered corner there. I want you to go down the rabbit hole on the rain gutters. If you're watching the video and you've made it this far, then I'm going to tell you whose channel to check out as far as rain gutters. It's called Mark Corvelli, raingutteruniversity.com. And he'll show you how to make the miters. Okay. Now, I kind of wish I would have cut my rain gutters with my miter saw, turned them upside down, and put it on a 45 and cut them. I didn't do it that way. I did the tin snips, which it's murder on your hands. It's going to give you really strong forearms, but it's murder. So if you have a 12 inch compound sliding miter saw then just get the metal cutting blade and and use the miter saw okay you're still gonna have to cut the tabs and bend them around and make your template all that stuff which I'm not going to show you here because there's better better content on that out there all right so but keep watching and let's talk more about my rain gutters now are these seamless rain gutters uh, no these are not seamless rain gutters if you look like really super close right there um, you can see there's a seam, okay? Now, why didn't I do seamless rain gutters? Well, first, I don't have the truck. Second, I called numerous companies, tried to get them to come out here, but we live out in the country. And nobody wants to come out here. And so, I, you know, I was thinking of having just somebody run them through their machines and drop them in my yard, but I just, no, I couldn't even, I couldn't even get them to do that. So my solution was go to USBS, They'll run them through the machine, whatever length I want. I just said, run them at 16 foot. They ran them through at 16 foot. And I'm glad I did it that way because when I'm up here on the ladder here and on the ladder here, and if I'm trying to lift up this whole section, just by the time I've been fighting to get under the gutter apron, it's not going to work with a, with a full piece, okay? Now, another thing, let me tell you this. If you have a hip roof, if you have a hip roof or if you have any valleys, in your roof then there's no such thing as a seamless gutter well why because they're either going to make a box miter which is going to have three seams in it or you're going to have a seam right at your corner or you're going to have a seam in your valley so the only way that you can have a seamless rain gutter is if you just have a gable roof and 
they can they can run out that run as long as they want to. So for me, it didn't matter. You know, I was going to do it myself. I did it myself. I got all the caulking. My thing is, well, I installed the rain gutters. If they leak, I could just get up there on a ladder and I can just put a little bit of caulking in. I don't have to stress out about seamless rain gutters. So for me, a seamless rain gutter just doesn't have value. Okay. Now, why did I go with the steel and not the aluminum? Because out here we get horrible hail. This is Eastern Colorado. We get horrible hail storms. And uh, any, anybody I talked to said, no, you don't want, you don't want aluminum out there. You want steel. So steel is much harder to work with, but it's going to hold up against the hail. Now I was not able to get steel downspouts. So I said, well, I don't care. Just sell me aluminum because I don't think the hell is going to get that aluminum. You see that? How could the hell get in there and smash that to pieces? Even if it does, that's easy to replace. So the aluminum is what I went with on the downspouts. Now this is me pointing out the drainage. I did this, even though drainage is going away from my house, I did this right here to keep my water from flooding the neighbor's basement. Okay. So this was before I had the rain gutters. I knew I wanted to do rain gutters, but even before I got my rain gutter, there's my zucchini. My zucchini is still growing. Uh, even though I got the rain gutters on before that, before I did the drain, it would, it would flood out her basement, but now it doesn't. So I'm super proud of that. All right. Now you can see right here, you might think one of these downspouts is redundant, which yeah, I, I could, you could make a point for that, but we don't get little soft, gentle summer rains here. We get horrible, like life threatening downpours. And so I don't care if I have one downspout too close to another. My thing is if one gets clogged up, well, there's the, another one right by there. Plus I got this run going all the way to my, uh, my little dry well. And I have this run going all the way to my little dry well. That's not teed in right there. That's a separate line. So I spent thousands of dollars on the SDR 35. Uh, Cause I put it every single downspout has its own dedicated drain line. So, um, I'm able to run a lot of capacity water off my roof without worrying about the, the drains becoming overflowing. Okay. Now let's look at this little, if you see this little scenario right here, that's for the clean out. Okay. So you just get yourself a street 45, the cap, and just put it together like that. That way, if you ever want to snake your rain gutter out, you don't have to take all this apart. You don't have to take your downspout apart. You could just snake that down. But I don't think I'll have to snake mine out because I have the filters up on top. I just have to get up there every so often and clean the gutters out by hand. Okay. So that was the, when I did the box miter. The same thing on a valley. You can't tell because the sun's ruining everything. But And then on your end, you want to you wanna run your end past the roof so it catches the water. Now up here, I stopped my gutter short because I thought, well, there's no point to put a rain gutter over that section because it's just water from the higher roof falling on the lower roof. So I'm not going to go all the way across there. So I saved a little bit of money and time right there. And the project took probably like two to three complete weeks because I did the lower section of the roof last year in the winter time. And that was a horrible decision, even though it turned out great. You know, it's just, it was, it, it was pain and suffering when you're out there with your hands freezing to death. And so this time, I was a few weeks ahead of the horrible winter and I got it done and, but still, it still took a long time. Now, could the pros come out and do all this in one day? Yeah, I'm sure they could have, but guess what? Now I can do rain gutters on any other house I ever buy. So I don't regret doing this myself. And then those are your, your you got your A downspouts and your B downspouts. That's the B downspout. Okay. So uh, I got some pitch on this one. It's not quite as much. And then up on this upper section, now you're like, okay, well, how did you get those rain gutters up if you tore your scaffolding down? Well, here's what I did. It's on, you have these, you've seen these before, right? These aluminum ladder stabilizers. I mean, you got to get those. Those are awesome. Get these and just get the little cheapy ones for $40. You don't need something more expensive. That's going to hold you off your roof line far enough where you can get your gutter up in there and work on your gutter. And if you've never been on a ladder stabilizer before, it's just the difference is night and day 
from climbing up a ladder with no stabilizer. I've just spent way too many years working on construction and never having used a ladder stabilizer. But once I got these, I'll never not use it. Okay. So invest in some ladder stabilizers if you're going to do anything with your rain gutters. That's how I got those up there. And I did not do the, I didn't do it by myself. I have my helper. He works with me every day, which I didn't have a helper before, but that's the only way I could get these rain gutters up, especially by fighting with that stupid gutter apron. I just can't imagine trying to do 60 feet alone. You know what I mean? That's just, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be stupid like that. So this here, that's why I made the downspout go in that shape because I want it right there in the corner of the house. And then that goes out there, a dry well, just underground. It's just in, into a dry well, just a hole in the ground filled with concrete. And then here on this side here, it's just, that's where we started. And, uh, just went around the corner. I had my little box miters already built. And uh, yeah, just rain gutters riveted in because, and I like the fact that the rivets are in there. I can literally hang from two hands with by my rain gutter and it's not going to fall off. Okay. That's not what it's made for, but by having those rivets in, it gives you just a ton of strength. Now, I'm not going to ever be able to take my rain gutters off, but I hope that's not my problem. That's going to be somebody else's problem 50 years from now. Okay. The, again, your my downspout drains are all going to that side. I got another downspout drain right here. Maybe that's redundant. They say you only need one downspout every 40 feet, but to me, it's like, well, it's my house. I can put as many downspouts as I want, and that way if one gets clogged, the other one will still work somewhat, you know, depending on the slope. Now this right here, let's look at this. Uh, I had forgotten how to do the, like I showed you before my clean out. This one I did it a little bit different and I don't like it this way. I wish I would have done it the other way where where you have, uh, where this is closer, you know what I mean? But by the time I had realized my mistake, it's like, well, it's already glued together. I'm not going to rip it apart, you know? So the thing, the, the thing is just do something where you can get your, your snake through there without having to disassemble your downspout if it ever gets clogged up okay and then if you look really close you can see when we did the concrete we did all the sealant i got it all the sealant around there so the water doesn't get in there and freeze and break the concrete <coughs> and this side was super challenging because that tree, we had to cut the tree down first because it was hanging over onto my side of the property. And uh, then the fence, her fence was right over here. And so that was kind of challenging, but we overcame it with some blocks and, and stuff. And what am I trying to show you right here? This is just, this is what I call the box miter. You can really see it well here. I just assembled these together down on the ground last year and just made the cuts, put them together, uh, bent over the bent over the tabs. And then when I go to put the rain gutters up, now I just go into this end right here. But this is not the best way to do it because then you have an extra seam here and an extra seam here. Now, you're never going to be able to not have a seam right there. I mean, I don't know, unless there's some kind of special scientific thing that comes out where they just extrude it on an, I don't know, it's just super impractical. I can't see a a way where you, where you would not have a seam right there. But the gutter sealant they sell is really durable stuff. It's really great stuff. And you're not going to have a problem if you just caulk it well with the gutter sealant. It's, I think it's the GeoCell. Let me look and see if I can if I can tell you which one it was that I used. Let's go into Google here. And let's say GeoCell gutter sealant. There it is right there. That's the one you want the geo cell okay that's the one you want for your gutter sealant that's the one i used i'm super happy with it all right let's go back to the video and downspouts see i did the, even did that one a little bit different see, see that that little drain inlet um well we're moving along now so this is the one I did last year, and you see I have it pitched both ways. And I probably could have got away with just one downspout here and just pitched it one way, but it's like, it's my house. I could do whatever I want. Now right here, look, see see, the, see this right here? 
uh, on the other side, I had put a downspout right here, which is fine. But right when I did this, I forgot. I was like kind of kicking myself a little bit. But then I thought it'll be okay. Just make the upper gutter drain into the lower gutter. And so that's what I did. And you can see right here when I when I sloped the gutter so much, it kind of made stuff look a little bit crooked. But there's way worse houses out here. And, uh, and I just wanted my rain gutters to be functional. Sometimes when you do your DIY stuff, it's not going to turn out exactly like the pros. You just got to give yourself a little bit of credit and keep going. You can't just get caught up in the details and, and, uh, and be too hard on yourself. You just have to say, okay, well, I don't do this every day, but it works and it's fine for me. So I'm going to move on to the next project. So don't get discouraged if you have little mistakes here. Just keep going. Okay. And you see that like even something like this where that soffit vent's kind of ugly. Well, who cares? It works. It's doing what it needs to. The insects aren't going to get there. But on the others, when I got to the upper section, I figured out a better way to do that. So the point of this is learning. If you're not making mistakes, you're not learning. So just don't make really big, stupid, huge mistakes where it's like you neglected to do your research and your homework. So if you're going down this rabbit hole for the rain gutters, then you're probably not going to make these really big, stupid, glaring mistakes where you regret doing this project. Okay, so keep watching these rain gutter videos. Keep watching my channel. And figure out all this before you get started because it's going to be a process for you. and It's going to take you some time. This, took, this, this process right here took me, this is a couple years in the making here because I didn't know like how I wanted to I know I didn't want rain gutters just like dumping the water right by the side of my house. Okay. And so it took me years to figure out what I wanted to do here, but now I got it. And now I'm the happy, proud owner of brand new rain gutters and I've already tested them and they don't leak. So thank you for watching the video. And uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I missed on the note of rain gutters before I cut it off. And, oh, here's what I was going to tell you. If you handle your rain gutters, you're going to scratch them, all right? So don't don't get too paranoid about scratching your rain gutters. You can go back and paint them later. Uh, and, you oh, I know what I was going to tell you. With your downspouts, use your crimpers because it's going to be hard to fit them together. Make sure that you get the, the downspouts. You put them together right because if you put them together wrong, the water is going to leak through. So just use it like keep... Keep it like if it was a roof shingle, if that makes sense to you. If it doesn't make sense, then you probably shouldn't be attempting your rain gutters, okay? All right. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Good luck on your rain gutter project. Keep watching the channel. And have a good day.